Hello and welcome to my video presentation on two-dimensional kinematics. Um, today we're going to be talking about motion two dimensions, so the X and Y component of motion. So if you haven't checked out my other videos on one-dimensional, um, you might want to do so, or if you already kind of know the kinematics equations, that's fine as well. So today, today we're going to be dealing with this problem that reads that a firefighter hoses water at an initial velocity of 40 meters per second and 30 degrees above the horizontal up to a fourth story window of a burning building, which is 50 meters away from him. It wants us to find the height of the fourth story window. So what we're kind of told in a way, not specifically, but we can assume that our initial height, he initially starts, is at zero. And the, the final height is what we're trying to solve for. So we don't know the final height. So from here all the way to here, well, that's our height. Now, what I like to do with two-dimensional kinematics is just create a chart and put in all my values that I'm given. That way I know what I'm missing and I'm, what, what I'm trying to solve for. Um, so let's just do that right now. It gives us an initial velocity of 40 meters per second. So right here, our initial velocity in the x and our initial velocity in the y. Now notice that, yeah, it gave us our initial velocity of 40 meters per second. But since we're dealing with two dimensions, the velocity isn't really 40 meters per second in both the x and the y. We have to separate this into two components. And that's going to be in the x and y. So using trigonometry, this is going to be our theta of 30 degrees. And the opposite side, which is right here, and this is our adjacent side, right here. Now, the adjacent side in this problem deals with the x direction, and then the opposite side deals with the y direction. So when we take the opposite side, if you remember Sokotoa, Sokotoa, okay, we know that the opposite side uses sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And adjacent side uses cosine adjacent. So when we do so, we're gonna we're gonna get that. Um, 40 meters per second times the sine of 30 degrees will be what you get in the y direction. So we're going to put that right here. Um, 40 sine of 30 degrees. And that's the y direction because we're dealing with this right here. And then the 40 cosine of 30 degrees is going to be our velocity in the x direction right here. So when you plug that into your calculator you get that the initial velocity in the x is going to be 34.6 and then when you do 40 sine of, of 30 degrees in the y you're going to get that that's 25 degrees or I'm sorry 20 20 meters per second. I'm not going to put, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to label this because we should know that just meters per second for velocity. All right, so we're given that. Now it says that the firefighter is 50 meters away from the building. So we can kind of assume that our initial distance, our initial point that we're starting out at is zero. So x equals zero. And then right here, x final equals 50 meters. So our x initial is 0 and then our x final or just x is 50. And then we're told that the initial, we're not really told, but we can assume that the initial, um, our initial y is going to be 0 because we're starting off at ground level. And what we're trying to solve for is the height, so we don't know our y. That's something that we don't know. We're trying to solve for this. Okay, 
Now, our final velocity in the x direction is actually not going to change because we don't have an acceleration in the x direction. So it'll stay at 34.6 meters per second. Now, the initial velocity in the y, we're not told what it is. So I'm just going to put a question mark right here. And our initial velocity, or our acceleration, I'm sorry, in the x direction, well, that's going to be 0. We don't have a, an acceleration in the x direction. The only thing we have is an acceleration in the y direction, which is just negative 9.8. The force of gravity is pulling the water down. So the only thing we have left to is solve for time because we don't have the time. Now, it does get a little bit tricky here because you want to solve for y, but you're, you're not given the time, you don't have your um, velocity in the y, and you don't have your final height in the y. So what we can do, since we do have pretty much all of our variables in the x direction, we actually do have all the variables in the x direction, is use the x component to solve for the time in order to plug the time back in to one of our y variables and solve for the height. So by doing so, let's just let's just pick an equation that has the time. Um, now we can use this one because it has the time and it has our distance, x minus x, o. So we can implement our distance in the x direction. And notice that it'll be really nice here because since our acceleration in the x is 0, if we're trying to solve for time, this will just go away in the long run because, I mean, that that's going to equal 0. So I'm going to bring this equation over down here. And we're just going to start plugging in some values until we can solve for our time. So x minus x sub 0, so that's saying our, our final x is at 50 meters, minus our initial x, which is at 0 meters, is going to equal the initial velocity in the x direction, which is 34.6, times the time which was is what we're trying to solve for. And once again, this will cancel out because the acceleration in the x direction is 0. So that will just end up being 0. So this is just 50 equals 34.6t. And if you solve for t, you're going to get that t equals 1.45 seconds. So we found our t is 1.45 seconds. Now what we want to do is use another kinematics equation to solve for our y since we have our t. So what we're going to want to do is use an equation that does not have the variable, the um, final velocity variable in the y direction, but one that does include the y uh, distance so that way because we're trying to solve for that. So it looks like when you look at these, this is actually going to be the equation that you will use because this one right here includes the final velocity which we don't have. This includes the final velocity which we don't have and this one includes the final velocity. So this is going to be the only equation that we're going to be able to use. So I'm going to rewrite this equation right here. Just notice that you'll be using your y's instead of x's. They work for they work the same way. So our Final y is what we're trying to solve for. So y minus our initial y, remember we said that minus starting off at 0, is going to be equivalent to our initial velocity in the y direction, which we said was 20 meters per second, times our time, plus 1 half of the acceleration in the in the y direction which is negative 9.8 times our time squared so again 1.45 squared so then when you go ahead and solve for y you're gonna get that y is equal to 
0.71 meters.